Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over and over again. If you are enjoying the content that you see on the channel, please do me a favor and like the video and subscribe. Join the family. I do also have a membership space. If you would like to see more bonus content, bonus vlogs, bonus sit down videos where I talk about a lot more in detail kind of things, things that I typically wouldn't share on the main space, then definitely do join the membership space and let's have fun in the in the space with JK and the fam, okay? Um, but today I am going to be answering some of your questions regarding my relationship. Now this is, I put it up on Instagram the other day and I said just because I don't show him online doesn't necessarily mean that I don't mind talking about him or answering questions regarding our relationship. So drop some questions i didn't think uh, let me tell you for the life of me i did not think that i would get as many questions as i got i just thought that oh well people are gonna be like yeah but you don't show him anyway so who cares okay catch me outside who cares okay, so i actually got a number of questions and thank you for all the questions and i'm going to answer them as honestly and as truthfully as i can so let's get into <sighs> All that mess, yeah. The okay. first question is a basic one, which I also think I answered in my last relationship Q&A video of how did you guys meet? So we met 10 years ago, or maybe even 11 at this point, but we met 10 years ago and we met online. We met on WeChat. Does anybody remember WeChat? Do you remember actually how WeChat was the... Bona? It was the end all, it was the be all. WeChat was the space, okay? I'm surprised my power isn't gone yet okay but WeChat was the space to be in okay and that's where I met him and I think I was random because WeChat worked like a little bit like tinder where you can um, meet somebody in the same periphery kilometer wise as you and that's pretty much and then we started chatting on there and I think we spoke for about three weeks before we officially met and uh, we got on so well we had similar interests um even though there are a lot of parts about us that are also very different but we had similar interests and all of that and we got on really well and yeah we took it off we chat it's like okay thanks for entering my dms but let's 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 talk on on what's up okay. do you assist in bill paying when going out or does your spouse out pay all the time what's your take on that i do the, here's the thing. I'm very different to, oh, no, man must pay all the time. Oh, no, man must whatever. I won't lie. 80% of the time he pays. Maybe even 90. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm also considerate of the fact that we spend quite a lot of money out and buying food and, 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 and trying out different restaurants and all of that. So I'm, I'm quite slick. And how I'll, I'll be like, oh, I'll pay, I'll pay for breakfast. And breakfast is like 500 Rand or breakfast is like 400 Rand, whatever. And if we're going to somewhere really expensive, I'll, I'll just be like. But I have a very different opinion to that. I feel like partners should be spoiled. Whether we should spoil each other. We should indulge each other. I don't believe in the concept of 50-50. No. No. Yeah. A different it's a different thing altogether however i do feel like it's considerate it's really considerate for you to say you know what this one i got it don't worry about it um or this one i got it don't worry about it expecting someone to consistently be paying the bill especially when you're in a long-term committed relationship i feel like that's weird okay but when you're when you're dating still getting to know each other and they are constantly inviting you out and all of that whoever invited whoever out must pay the bill period if i say to him that even now in our relationship i'll say to him oh no i really want to try out this place let's go on sunday i will instinctively take out my card unless he says no no no, it's fine i'll pay but if you are invited out the person who invited you out must pay the bill but i don't have this thing your goody hey hey men the, 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 the your partner must pay all the time your partner must pay all the time no that's ridiculous and and no in the times that we live in i am luena luena don't mm -mm. 
Lona, just do something nice and GF from Utah how for a change. Just do something nice. Do you guys have the same love languages? Hmm, huh, that's a good question. My love languages, top top of the top nah, I don't think we do. Top of the the, the, the form is words of affirmation, physical touch, and then maybe acts of service. But top 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 is words of affirmation. And I think his and I think maybe the only one we share in common is physical touch. I don't think I forgot. And I remember we did the whole test thing and all of that. We did it and I, I remember then that, oh no, we're quite different in terms of how we express and show love for each other. But nah, it's not the same. Have you changed your mind about getting married? Did I have a certain mind frame? I'm assuming that based on my marriage video that uh, I, I spoke about how for me it's really not a, not a big deal. Like I don't look at marriage as an accomplishment. I don't look at getting a ring as something to look forward to or constantly pressing my partner about when are you going to marry me? When are you going to marry me? I want to get married. I, wanna, I don't see marriage in that way. Um, have I ever been against it? No, absolutely not. I've never been against marriage. I just don't base my life around, oh my God, one day I hope I'll get married. I don't. Even till today, I still share the same views. I still share the same opinions that uh, marriage mustn't be looked at as an accomplishment or a way to, you know, validate me as a person. Like, oh, please validate me by marrying me. No, bro. <laughs> no, bro. No, bro. Um, so I still feel the same way. I still haven't changed how I feel about uh, marriage and all of that. I really don't like this top. Maybe I don't like how it's sitting. It's actually uh, my thoughts on marriage. I have a whole entire video about it. I'll I'll link it down below, uh, or I'll put it uh, here, here somewhere. Yeah, I'll put it here. What are the things that you require in a man? Firstly, you must be good looking for my eyes. And, and this is a partner, just generally, right? Woman or man, you must be good looking, all right? Uh, I value someone who is smart and who's got EQ. Not just IQ. No, I'm not just looking at your IQ. I, I want EQ as well. I want to see how you relate to the world in terms of, yeah, yeah, okay? Your emotional intelligence is really important to me. But I also really appreciate someone who's funny. Yo, nah, you must, you must be funny. But, happy. also another very important thing, and I don't know how to say that in English, you, you must be able to stand on your own two feet. I don't think that's a perfect way of saying it. That's, not, that's like a direct translation, but it's, it means in the sense that own, you know, be, be okay in your life, in your finances, you know, you know, know where you're at, you know, own your shit, own your truth, something along those lines. Uh, but those things are very important for me. Of course, um, you must have not a ridiculously high bank balance, but you must be okay in life, okay? I don't expect you to be a millionaire or anything like that, but you must be okay and you must be comfortable so that we can be comfortable in our relationship as well and we don't have to ever um, let finances be the determining factor for why we're together or why we have problems. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to get married and start your own family one day? Like I said, if I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. It really isn't uh, the end of the world. Um, have a kid. Yeah, my thoughts on having a kid are actually changing, hey? Um, I'm getting broody quite a lot lately. And I think about kids quite a lot. And my sister's also on my ass about having a kid. And I was just like, mm -hmm, okay. What's your deal breaker? Um, cliche as it sounds, cheating is a deal breaker. Uh, disrespecting my family, you know? You know, I understand when we are mad at each other and we say a lot of disparaging things to one another. But if you ever touch my family or you say, oh yeah, that's why your ass is crazy. That's why your ass is crazy. We're done. Once, once you say that, we are done. There is nothing I have to say to you. Um, obviously, things like physical abuse as well, sharp, all the kinds of, all the kinds, emotional, verbal, sexuality, and all of that, all those kinds of, of abuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Um, Deal breaker. Okay. Um, what's the one supportive thing you've done for your partner and vice versa? 
Uh, for me, what I can already tell you, and this is something that you've probably seen watching the channel and watching the videos, um, that he was very supportive in my time away. When I went to the facility and all of that, he was very supportive. He made sure he got me stuff before I went there so that I was comfortable, clothes, you know, cosmetics, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he didn't want me taking the, the things that I use in the house. So he opted, how is the power not gone? Hmm. He opted for, for you, you know, me to get new things. And, um, and how we have been since um, is really great. Even before he was quite supportive, but now he knows more about what's going on, what's going on with me in here. Um, all those kinds of things. Now he knows more. So that's, that's pretty good. And that's something I truly appreciate how I've been supportive. I mean, that gent, I, I feel like he just, he's got his shit together. You know, there's not much that I need to show support. Like, Oh my God, he went through this difficult thing. And I, I, I stood up and I supported him in that time. There isn't really anything apart from the fact that I support you know, the dreams, the passions, um, his side hustles. I'm very supportive of that. Um, that kind of thing. Like, I'm, I'm very supportive. I listen and I give suggestions and um, I entertain all... Some of some of the things are just like, really, really. But I, ent I entertain it and I support him. Um, and and that's, that's pretty much all I've done. There really hasn't been anything that's huge that stands out uh where i can say that i did this and i supported him i don't i don't recall uh what's the most loving thing you've done for your partner and vice versa yo a lot um a lot uh i for me for me it's 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 that thing right of of going away going to the facility and him taking care of me uh in that time and speaking to me while i was in there and making sure i was okay when i came out and and how he treats my mental struggles with very soft hands. Um, he doesn't quite understand, obviously, to a large extent, uh, what is exactly going on with me. But, but he gets it, right? He gets it as far as any person who isn't struggling with can get it. Um, so, so for me, that's, that's the most loving thing that he's done for me. Just, just, just support me in that way. Um, not, not, not the materialistic stuff like what he's bought for me or, 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 you know, the trips we've taken together or whatever. I'd be here all day. The list is so long that I'd be here all day. But that for me was the one thing that stood out. And for, for me, the one loving thing I've done, man, I just love him. Okay. Really at this point, I, I don't know what else it must be that I must do. <laughs> What I must do, what I must do, uh, 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 just me being a presence in his life is the most loving thing I could have ever done for him. Honestly, this is me saying this because I can't think of a damn thing. <laughs> if you could relive one day of your romantic relationship, which day would it be? Definitely the first night we were at Lions Valley. So the, the, the vlog is on my channel. I'll put it up here. And uh, that first night we were there, everything went great. You know, we, we arrived, we went on the safari drive. We came back, we had dinner, and then we went back to the room. And then we sat in front of the fire. A lot happened that night, okay? <laughs> a lot happened that night. Some, some crazy things happened that night. But there's a point where we sat in front of the fire and we switched off all the lights in the room. So we switched off all the lights in the room and we opened the blinds so that we could see outside and see the stars and the moon was out and whatever. And we just sat there and we had a drink and we had a chat and we, I don't know, I think we sat there for about three hours and just having a drink, chatting, listening to the sounds of the, of the, of the, of the wild, of the bush. And that's one of the most memorable moments I've ever shared with him. There's many, but that one, Ooh, the conversation, ooh, ooh, wonderful. Signs of a healthy romantic relationship, communication, trust. It's, it's cliche, but these are really important things that we take for granted. Some people are just emotionally distant. They're emotionally unavailable. They can't communicate. Um, they struggle with being loyal to you. They struggle with, you know, like all of that kind of stuff. So me saying things like communication, is so important. Emotional intelligence, when it comes to 
being in a romantic is the is one of the most important things. Forget this communication, this trust, this whatever. Emotional intelligence, because that will be the foundation of everything else that comes below it. So emotional intelligence will dictate how you communicate to one another. Emotional intelligence will dictate whether this person is loyal to you or not. It will dictate trust in the relationship. Emotional intelligence will dictate whatever. So it's the overbearing thing that I feel like must be there. If you are with somebody who's going through their emotions, well, you can go through the emotions, whatever, but if they can't communicate that with you, it's a struggle. It really, really is a tough time. So I think emotional intelligence, trust, uh, loyalty, mm -hmm, trust, loyalty, uh, communication, really, really fundamental parts of uh, a healthy relationship. Um, what ways do you think you and your partner have evolved as a couple? This is a really great question. And I don't have an answer to it. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think we've grown in how we communicate with one another, right? We've grown in how we communicate what we want from the relationship and what we don't want and what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. And I'll be honest, in the beginning, when we would fight... I would go off, okay? I would scream, I would shout, I would this, I would that, I would this. And now I'm with someone who's like, I'm not going to speak to you if you're shouting at me. Calm down. Let's talk. And I've learned this was growth for me. Because in all my other relationships, I would scream, shout, do whatever, blah, blah, blah. Try and get, get you know, like, you're going to hear me today. That kind of thing. And I realized in this one that there's no need for any of that. We do get upset. We both get upset. But now I've learned that calm yourself down, shop, go away for a little bit. If you, if you feel like you're going to scream, go away for a little bit, come back. Let's be in separate rooms in the house for a little bit. Then we come back and we have a chat. Um, so we, we, uh, we've grown, evolved in the sense that we have learned how to communicate with each other without hurting each other which is so important, which is so important. Um, but also, you know, we talk about finances and we talk about, he was actually telling me the other day how much we spend in a month on just going out, eating out, trying this, movies, this, 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 how much we actually spend in our shop. Like, it's, it's, it's just a thing that we communicate all these things. We communicate how we feel about a certain thing, about a certain person. We talk to each other. Reaseba. Reaseba, which is something I love about our relationship. Siaseba. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So I feel like we've grown in just how we are um, towards each other, for each other, for the relationship. And it's actually helped me. Um change in terms of how I integrate myself or interact rather with other people. Mm -hmm. Have your friends taught you anything about your romantic relationships? No, no, actually. <laughs> Who? Why? No, uh, I, I, I believe that they have. Uh, my friends and I have been through a lot in all our respective relationships. And um, when they recite to me the things that they have been through with their partners and whatever, I learn a lot about what not to do and what's important and what not what is unacceptable what 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 you cannot let go and things like that so I've learned a lot uh, the conversations that I have with my friends about relationships even though we barely have conversations about relationships we actually talk about money more than anything and how we're going to make money together and all of that but um when we do talk about relationships, it's actually eye-opening and it's it's conversations centered around healing and growth and not necessarily conversations that are said, we are shy, you know, yes, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. it's not conversations like that. It's conversations about what have you learned and uh, what did it do for you in that time and all of that. So um, we've never carried on a fight for longer than a day. If, if we're fighting, we're fighting today, tomorrow's done. Um, so that's, that's, that's good. That's something that, that the relationship has taught me. Was that the question? Oh, no. oh, that was something that he made me realize about myself. And he also made me realize about myself that I'm, I'm too kind. And a lot of the time people take my kindness for weakness and he's not, he's kind, but to a certain, yeah, but after, after, 
If you push it here, he's not nice. He's a, he's a Scorpio. You get on the wrong side, it's not going to be nice for you. Yeah, Ibon. So he's the one who actually taught me that that's unacceptable. That you were spoken to that way. That's not okay. How did you respond? And I'll be like, ah, no, I don't know. No, no, no. This is why people are going to walk all over you all the time. Stop it. And so, yeah. I, I learned quite a few things. Learned quite a few things. What is the one thing that your partner constantly does that you love and vice versa? Flowers. I'm going to put it simple. There's other things that seem to be a consistent, a constant now, like the shoes and, 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 and stuff, okay? But flowers is one of the nicest things that even till now he hasn't forgotten to do. So every time he'll come here, he'll bring flowers. Or every time I'll go to him, I'll, oh, no, when I go to him now, no, he don't do that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. But it's a consistent thing that he does every two weeks or so where he'll bring me flowers. And I love that because flowers make me happy. Okay, plants make me happy. Like I'm just, <gasps> I'm actually thinking of putting a bunch of flowers here, 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 here. They just sit here and I would love that actually. That's a plan. Um, and, and, and something I do for him consistently that he loves. <laughs> Can I even say it here? Is it like, it's not going to be like PG. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think he would have to answer that one. But I think one thing he really loves to indulge me in and, and he loves that I indulge him in is the conversations that we have about cars and what we're going to do. He loves, he's a car fanatic and, um, um, just entertaining him when it comes to things that he loves that I, um, I'm just like, okay. I mean, I like cars, but not like you do that kind of thing. You know, you once mentioned that you used to date him before. What made you give it another chance? It's a great question. Thanks pals. Okay. Um, what made me give it another chance is man, as much as I don't give excess chances. I don't ever, but I like him. And I know that at his core, he's a great guy. He's just, we didn't split up because when we split up the first time around, we didn't split up because I was disrespected. I was cheated on. I was whatever. We split up because I felt like he didn't have enough time. Aha, the power's gone. That's one of the big things that, that's one of the big things that we connected us. The fact that we didn't separate the first time around because I was disrespected or cheated on or whatever. We separated because I felt like he was too centrally focused on his job and growing in his career and he didn't necessarily have time for our relationship and I felt like it's best I distance myself. Um, so not because I stopped loving him or I just wasn't into him anymore or he wasn't into me or whatever. We were always into each other and uh, yeah. That's, that's why I gave it another shot because I, I, I know him at his He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Uh, were you guys friends with benefits after you broke up the first time? <laughs> I mean, I guess once or twice. I don't know. I think so. Honestly, truthfully, I'm going to tell the truth. Yeah, I think once or twice we, we did a little showing, you know, when, when he visited. But not, not all. No. It was just that once off like, oh, come on. And then it happened. Uh, oh. What's your favorite memory of him? I'm going to end it here. What's my favorite memory of him? You know, he's got this habit of whether we were together or not. Um, but every single time he would purchase a new car, he'd ensure that he shows me. And I think he, he, did that because he knows how much I love cars and how much cars are just a really big fundamental part of our relationship. Like we talk about them a lot and we talk about how when we live in one place, how are we going to do this? What, cars, what, what cars are we going to get? Who's going to manage this, this, that about cars? And um, one of the most memorable things about him, whether we were together or not, he would always come and show me his cars. If he was buying a new car, he'd come and show me. You're buying a new card, come and show me. 
buy a new car, come and show me. There's, there've been like four and I'm just like, mm. <laughs> initially I would see it like, why are you doing that? But long flow seta. Who cares, bro? But honestly, um, I, I think he was just doing that because he knows the, the love we share for cars together. And I think that's quite nice because now I'm waiting for the next one. So I, I wonder if he'll show me then. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, tell me why you enjoyed it. I'm going to film a candid with Cat now, so it's about to be a party. <laughs> I'm going to go. Please subscribe to the channel. Please watch the videos. Please like them. And again, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.